respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all nations, recognition of the equality of all races and of equality of all nations, large and abstention from intervention or interference of another country, respect for the right of each nation singly or collectively in conformity with the chart of the absenteeism, uh, ab abste abste abstention of arrangements of collective defense to serve the particular interest powers, abstention by any country from exerting on other countries, seven refrain rates of aggression or use of force integrity of or, or political independence of any country, settlement of all international disputes by peaceful means such as mission, conciliation, arbitration or judicial settlement as well as peaceful means of the party's own choice in conformity with the Charter of the United Nations. Promotion of mutual interests and cooperation and respect for justice and international obligation. It is on this that the, that the NAM was founded. The fighters of Uganda can testify that synthesizing the package of ideas have got very good results. Using the ideas of the free market, we use the free market principles. Like this hotel, intervention between the government and the private sector. In some cases, the government can have some parastatals, but in most of the cases, we the sector. The idea, the ideas of the free market combined with the ideas of select intervention in the economy in some sectors like banking, energy, transport, ETC, bring back some, some aspects of the pre-capitalist institutions, such as the reformed cultural institutions Uganda. Uganda, although starting from a very low base, has had growth rates of 6.2% per annum for the last 37 years. We are not impressed and cannot be part of the morbid, morbid, I want the word morbid, sickly of the morbid bigotry bigger trade, uni ideological thinking of this or that type. I'm going to say, this is the only correct idea. This is the only correct idea. If you don't believe in this, I ask you. Really? Now you come, within 20 years, you think, what you think is the only correct thing? You must be sick. You therefore should not Because a party is uni ideological, terrorist party, those are uni ideological. Our 
ideological because that's what fits our society. Conjun. The strength of the non-aligned non movement to exercise considerable influence, particularly for the effective transfer, uh, trans transformative process future. In the negotiations for the Pact of the Future, some document of the upcoming United Nations Summit of the Future to be held in 2024, we should clearly define the priorities that developing countries by maintaining unity, selective coordination among our member states in line with the Bandung I, I, I assure you all that my team in New York has my full support to chair the code of the land aligned movement. I thank you and I welcome you all to Uganda. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm getting trained to be chairman. He's training me how to be chairman. Ah, I now know my job now. invite His Excellency Salvador Edesh Mesa, Vice President of, the, of Cuba and Chairperson of the Group of 77 and Chai to address uh, us. Estimado Presidente Yoweri Musi, Estimado Jefe de Estado y de Gobierno, Esteemed Heads of State and Government, Heads of Delegations. It is a great honor and privilege to participate in this, the African continent. Apparently, there seems to be an issue with the microphone, says the interpreter. It is a great honor and privilege to participate in this important this here in Africa. Africa is the land of our ancestors. Africa is part of the essence of, of our homeland and of the community, which marks the 50th anniversary of the establishment of our bilateral. It was an honor to visit the sister nation of Uganda and reaffirm the bonds of friendship and cooperation that unite us. We are holding this 19th summit after more than six decades and we are preserving the unity of the non-aligned movement and coping with huge external pressures intended to divide and weaken the movement. The main forum for political coordination of the country of the South is independence and the development of our peoples. Our 
distinctive diversity is our strength. Thus, to find consensus amid different viewpoints, principles and values that we share. The non movement has been a leading advocate of many in the world, among them the struggle against colonialism, fascism, racism. Our movement promotes in favor of development as the achievement of a new international economic order. It has raised its voice several times against aggressions, against war, and the imposition of unfair sanctions and unilateral coercive measures against our nations. Today, faced with new global challenges, it is essential, it is imperative that we keep our forces united. We need to coordinate positions and ensure that our voice is heard in defense of the aspirations and just demands of our peoples. Cuba is conditioned as chair of the Group of 77 and China has undertaken to promote unity, solidarity and cooperation among the countries of the South. We urgently need to coordinate our nations in the face of the current international order, which is deeply unjust, it is exclusive, excluding, uh, and it is discriminatory towards our peoples. We affirm our strong rejection against the implementation of unilateral coercive measures which have been imposed on several members of our movement. Cuba would like to underscore its support to the right of the people of Western Sahara to self-determination. We express also our inequivocal support to the right uh, of Puerto Rico to exercise its self-determination and independence. Excellencies, since last October we have been witness to one of the cruelest genocidal acts ever to be recorded with impunity and repulsive brutality, Israel has submitted them to a collective punishment that has already lives of more than 20,000 innocent civilians as it stole. How countries who claim to be so civilized just the murder of women and children in Gaza, the indiscriminate bombings of hospitals, uh, and the deprivation of access to safety, we could further ask done by the historical leader of our Cuban revolution, Fidel Castro, in a, back in 1979. Is it not true that we can observe in this uh, irrefutable demonstration of imperialism's aggressive role and Cuba suggests the non-aligned movement being consistent with the historical support to the Palestinian people. Uh, the non-aligned movement should, as I said, carry out without further delay four practical actions as a, con as a contribution to the intended to hold the current act of barbarism. One call for an immediate in Gaza and the rest of the Palestinian territories, in all possible to, to support the urgent dispatch of international protection authorized by the UN General Assembly, 
with a key mandate to guarantee the security and protection of the civilian population and facilitate the delivery of emergency humanitarian aid, including water and foodstuffs. Three, to convene a resumed emergency special session of the United Nations General Assembly, where the NAM would propose a resolution calling for the convening of a peace conference under the auspices of the United Nations that would make it possible to preserve the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people, including its right to have an independent and sovereign state within the uh, borders prior to 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital. Or calling the prompt incorporation of the state of Palestine as a fully fledged member state of the United Nations. Excellencies, every historical epoch brings about its own challenges, and the current times bring about challenges which are key and decisive for the future of humanity. The current global order in force is characterized by multiple crises, extreme social polarization, increasing asymmetries, geopolitical conflicts, and an erosion and weakening of multilateralism. Exclusion, ethnicity, and inequality continue to perpetuate. The international financial architecture designed by the wealthiest countries for their own benefit continues to be a stumbling block to the developmental aspirations of our nations. At the current rate of progress, none of the agreed 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, the 2030 Sustainable Agenda, Development Agenda, would be or could be achieved. But yet we face the fact that military budgets are reaching exorbitant figures. Climate change is threatening the survival of the human species. And our countries, ones that least contribute to the environmental crisis, are the ones which are most vulnerable to its impact. The financial commitments entered into by the industrialized countries, the ones that bear primary responsibility for depredation and global overheating are very insufficient. From the south, let us call for an urgent democratization of the international relations system. This is what we stated in September last during the summit of the G77 in China that we were honored to host in Havana. It is possible to guarantee proud, prosperous, and sustainable living standards for the majorities, uh, the great majorities of this population, so long as the huge capacities that are there and exist to create wealth and well-being are used equitably and fairly. Only cooperation and solidarity among all countries uh, will be effective to be able to cope with the colossal challenges of present and future times. The wealthiest countries have no excuses not to meet their commitment to assign at least 0.7% of their the gross domestic product to official development assistance. It is shocking that the nations of the South should have to uh, allocate at least 14% of their income to pay for interests associated to foreign debt, and that the least developed countries are paying interest rates that are eight times higher than those of developed countries. I reaffirm Cuba's commitment to international fraternal cooperation, in particular South-South cooperation, 
based on mutual respect, selfless assistance. Despite our limited resources and the brutal blockade that we have faced in Cuba, we shall maintain our cooperation with other countries in need to the extent of our possibilities. Following our principle of sharing with modesty what we have. Dear participants, Washington's economic warfare against Cuba has not ceased for a single day for more than 60 years. There's not a single Cuban family spared from its terrible effects. It is the longest lasting, most comprehensive and cruelest system of unilateral coercitive measures that have ever been imposed against any nation, designed to force the surrender of an entire people by hunger and desperation. The criminal and illegal uh, economic, commercial, and financial blockade imposed by the United States against Cuba has reached unprecedented levels of aggressiveness and has been reinforced to extremes and is thus becoming the main stumbling block to the development, to the dreams of prosperity and development of more than 11 million Cubans. In these circumstances, we appreciate even more action expressed by the non-aligned movement against its criminal policy. On behalf of our people, I also thank the members of the NAM for their rejection of the unwarranted inclusion of Cuba in the unilateral and spurious list drawn up by the United States of states sponsors of terrorism. This immoral and unfounded action by the United States government has curtailed to very high levels the flow of financial resources into our country, led them to a minimum. It is an insult to the truth and an outrage for Cubans who have been victims of many terrorist acts perpetrated from the U.S. territory uh, against us for decades, even now as I speak. Brothers and sisters, we would like to thank and congratulate Azerbaijan for its outstanding work in running this movement during a particularly complex period marked by the COVID-19 pandemic which demanded additional efforts on, on all of us. We wish Uganda the greatest of success as president of the movement during the 2024-2026 triennial. And it will always be able to count on Cuba's full support. We have struggled together to get to where we are now. And together we have won transcendental victories for our nations. Together we shall continue the necessary battle for a proud, just, prosperous and sustainable future for our peoples. And Cuba will always be on the front line of that battle. We should not forget the words of the historical leader of the Cuban Revolution when, during the summit of our movement in Cartagena de Indias, almost 30 years ago, uh, and which today are more valid than ever, and I quote, we are not mere spectators. The world is also our world. No one can replace our united action. Nobody will speak on our behalf. Oh, we alone and only united can reject the unjust uh, world economic and political order that they would like to impose on our people. Thank you very much.
I now give the floor to His Excellency Dennis Francis, President of the 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. Your Excellency, Yoweri Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda and Chairman of the Non-Aligned Movement. Your Excellency Jehun Biramov, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Azerbaijan, speaking on behalf of the outgoing Chairman of the Movement. Your Excellencies, the Heads of State and Government of the Movement, Mr. Musa Faki, Chairman of the Commission of the African Union, esteemed ministers, permanent representatives, distinguished delegates. I am deeply honored to join you in Kampala today on the occasion of the 19th Summit of the Non-Aligned Movement. I am especially grateful to His Excellency Mr. Yoweri Museveni, the President of Uganda, and to the government and people of Uganda for their invitation and gracious hospitality. Let me also convey my warm congratulations to the government of Uganda on assuming the chairmanship of the movement. Your known, astute, and insightful leadership assures me that under your guidance, NAM will effectively tackle forthcoming challenges bolstering both its profile and influence. Allow me also to commend the outgoing chairman, the President of Azerbaijan, His Excellency Ilham Aliyev, for his successful stewardship of the movement during difficult times, and notably in broadening its connection with the people through initiatives like the NAM Parliamentary Network and the NAM Youth Organization. This year's summit theme, Deepening Cooperation for Shared Global Affluence, recalls the movement's founding principles of cooperation and collaboration, urgent prescriptions in the current setting. Our world is beset with profound, multifaceted challenges which demand creativity and consensus building to fashion effective solutions. Unhappily, it is precisely in the opposite direction that we are headed. Widening inequalities are breeding fresh grievances, while mistrust and geopolitical competition are hampering efforts to realize our aspirations of achieving sustainable development by 2030. In Ukraine, the Middle East, and here in Africa, crises and conflicts are laying bare the limits of the multilateral system, raising legitimate questions as to the relevance and value of the United Nations itself in terms of its ability to resolve global issues and whether we, as a global community, can deliver the promise of peace and prosperity for all. There is no doubt that the world is deeply <coughs> fragmented, complicating the mission and undermining the traditional mechanisms adopted by the United Nations in addressing major problems. And while we must, out of necessity, engage in introspection and adopt more effective strategies and methods to achieve delivery and meaningful impact, the one thing we must work hard to avoid is the loss of our ability to find common purpose and to act decisively when the moment demands it. I must tell you that I'm deeply concerned and indeed dismayed 
about the ongoing calamity in the Gaza Strip. And so I call upon this movement to exert its influence in bringing a halt to the carnage that we are haplessly witnessing. That situation behoves us to ask, how much is enough? And does the very concept of enough even exist in this setting? Looking to the future of the regenerate my urgent call on all parties to refrain from any action that could further spill over into neighboring countries. The General Assembly, encompassing the voice of the vast majority of member states, has been clear. In that regard, I renew the demand for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and for the release of all hostages. This stands as the only credible course of action to authentically address, let alone resolve, this conflict. The wanton prosecution of violence only inspires intergenerational and cyclical appetites for retribution and reprisal. After various iterations of war over several decades, I am convinced that a negotiated political solution is the sole path through which both Israelis and Palestinians will see realize their fundamental right to a life of peace based on the two-state solution. As President of the General Assembly, I will support and encourage any and all initiatives to that end. You can count on me to remain steadfast in that commitment. It is precisely for these reasons that I chose peace as the first of four priorities of my presidency, reflecting its foundational importance as a prerequisite for achieving prosperity progress and sustainability for all. The history of NAM itself teaches us important lessons that remain valid today, bearing in mind that the movement was formed at a time of unprecedented global division, when the world appeared to be on the brink. Given NAM's commitment to and advocacy for peace, representing more than half of the global population, it has an indispensable role in guiding our world pragmatically towards a more secure, more just, and more prosperous future for all, where harmony and peace prevail. Excellencies, as we make complex choices about the kind of world we wish to forge, we must never lose sight of the fact that today's challenges, be it war, poverty, natural disasters, climate change and sea level rise, energy crises and food shortages, all have a human face. In whatever way we respond, we must ensure that we always assign pride of place to the human dimensions and consequences of our actions. Pursuit of a human-centered vision of international cooperation offers the prospect of refocusing the international community's attention away from a path of self-destruction towards one of safe and just evolution. To that end, let us strengthen the prospect for peace through investing in human security. Let us respect and uphold human rights. And let us keep human welfare and human dignity at the very center of all that we do. This is clearly the intent of the Charter in the expressions we the peoples of the United Nations. 
This includes ensuring that the technologies revolutionizing our existence do much, do much more to cement our shared humanity rather than to subdue and to subordinate it. As Kofi Annan wisely observed nearly two decades ago, no society can long remain prosperous without the rule of law and respect for human rights. As you set about strategizing how best to employ the NAM formula of cooperation to achieve shared global affluence, I am hopeful that you will keep the late Secretary General's precepts in mind. As the UN's largest group, constituting two-thirds of the membership, NAM's critical mass empowers it to play an influential role in shifting the balance of the geopolitical landscape from conflict and confrontation to diplomacy, from suspicion and mistrust to trust-building dialogue, and from violence and aggression to tolerance, understanding, and peace. To move the dial, we need swift action in priority areas. On nuclear disarmament, NAM has the capacity and the influence to contribute to the de-escalation of confrontation by promoting multilateralism as the core principle of negotiation and multilateral diplomacy as the means of achieving progress. In the area of conflict prevention, NAM countries can lead the way by upholding international norms, respecting human rights, and vehemently countering entrenched racism, intolerance, and xenophobic attitudes that provide fertile ground for terrorism and discord and for conflict and strife. I urge the NAM to undertake an in-depth assessment of the new agenda for peace given its focus on conflict prevention. Perhaps nowhere is the value of international cooperation of more profound consequence than in our pursuit of a sustainable future for all. Indeed, our promise to leave no one behind hinges on our ability to build strong and diverse partnerships, share knowledge widely and strategically, and strengthen our joint capacities to reach the most vulnerable. The Summit of the Future in September 2024 will offer an historic opportunity to fast track the achievement of the SDGs and forge a new global consensus to transform our multilateral system to deliver with better impact for people and planet. Ahead of the summit in April 2024, I will host the first ever Sustainability Week in the General Assembly. The flagship initiative of my presidency featuring mandated high-level events on transport, tourism, infrastructure, and energy, as well as a signature event on debt sustainability. I invite the members of the movement, both individually and collectively, to engage meaningfully in these events and to participate at the highest levels possible to take lead in shaping the new multilateral frameworks that will carry us into the coming decades. The potential of the NAM to drive substantive progress across the global agenda, especially in fostering peace and security, remains formidable. My team and I are ready to support the Ugandan chairmanship in any effort to further elevate NAM's strategic engagement and influence as we mold the future for safety and security and for shared affluence. 
together let us therefore deepen our cooperation. Let us work fervently together to rebuild trust and to open new pathways of cooperation and partnership to ensure that indeed global affluence is shared equitably by all so that no one is left behind. I thank you. I want to thank uh, His Excellency Francis. I now invite His Excellency Musafaki, Chairperson of the African Union Commission. Your Excellency Iwori Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda and the Chair of the 19th Summit of Head of State and Government of Non-Aligned Movement. Your Excellencies, Head of State, Government and Delegation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to begin my statement by thanking His Excellency Yori Kogutta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, for hosting this 19th Summit of the Non-Aligned Movement here in this beautiful city of Kampala, the capital of the Pearl of Africa. My thanks go to the good people and government of Uganda for making all necessary efforts to ensure a successful summit. I also wish to take this opportunity to thank all head of state and government of NAM for their participation in this important high-level meeting. The summit is timely as it takes place under the theme Deepening Cooperation for Shared Global Affluence. It is indeed an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to strengthen our cooperation on the basis of a strategic partnership that endeavors to maintain peace, security, and development while expressing grave concern over the challenges posed by the continued prevalence of conflict, terrorism, and security and instability in some parts of our regions. A stark example today is the war in Gaza. Africa condemns this unacceptable moral, legal, and humanitarian failure and demands an immediate end to the unjust war against the Palestinian people and for the immediate implementation of the two states solution. I again express the African Union's full and unwavering support to the Palestinian people and as a non-aligned movement, we should all demand a stand for international justice and international law for all people fighting for freedom and dignity. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, during the early days of the movement, its action were key factors in the decolonization process while later led to the attainment of freedom and independence of many countries across the globe. Throughout its history, the non-aligned movement has played a fundamental role in the preservation of world peace and security. You would agree with me, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that the founders of NAM have preferred to declare it as a movement instead of an organization in order to avoid bureaucratic implications of the letter and to reinforce its values as a movement for political and social justice. The membership criteria formulated during the preparatory conference in Cairo, Egypt in 1961 shows that the movement was not conceived to play a passive role 
in the international politics, but to formulate its own positions in an independent manner so as to reflect the interest of its member states. Much has been achieved, but we continue to face many challenges, old and new. Current challenges facing NAM include the necessity of protecting the principles of international law, eliminating weapons of mass destruction, combating terrorism, defending human rights, working towards making the United Nations more effective in meeting the needs of all its member states in order to preserve international peace, security, and development, as well as justice in the international economic system. The climate change crisis is a new but urgent global challenge. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Africa has surmounted numerous challenges in the past from which the continent has learned key lessons as it gears up to build the Africa we want and the Africa we deserve, as outlined in our continental development agenda, Agenda 2063. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement launched by the African Union re represents a global market of more than, than 1.3 billion people to boost intra-African trade, but also with the world to deepen cooperation for shared affluence. Despite this progress made, many African countries are still facing different forms and magnifications of terrorism, as well as transnational organized crime that risk to undo the important developmental gains on the continent. Africa is now a member of the G20, a key global platform to express the views of the continent with the rest of the world. However, the reform of international global political, financial, and economic institutions to ensure global equity remains a priority for Africa and the global south. Today, I wish to seek the support of all member, members of non-aligned movement to the efforts of African Union to reform the UN Security Council. Africa, assuming permanent seat in the UNSC, will contribute to the global stability, peace, security, and sustainable development. That is why efforts shall continue to achieve this African dream of securing two permanent seats within the UN Security Council. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the non-aligned movement faced with the goals yet to be reached and the many new challenges that are arising is called upon to maintain a prominent and leading role in the current international relations in defense of the interests and priorities of its member states and for achievement of peace and security for mankind. Once again, I would like, on behalf of the African Union, to express our appreciation to His Excellency President Yuri Kogutam Museveni for the invitation extended to us to be part of this important summit. I wish you fruitful deliberations. Thank you for your kind attention. I wish to thank His Excellency Musafaki for his statement. I now give the floor to Mr. Yirmaz, Vice President of, of, of Taki. He's a special guest. Your Excellency Chair, Excellencies, dear colleagues, 
It's a pleasure for me to be in Kampala and to address the 19th Summit of the Non-Aligned Movement. Let me begin by conveying to you the warm greetings of His Excellency President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and people of Turkey. I sincerely thank our Ugandan brothers and sisters for their kind invitation and excellent hospitality. We wish them all the success throughout their chairmanship. I also extend Turkey's heartfelt congratulations to Azerbaijan, who has successfully concluded its crucial role at the helm of the NAM. Ladies and gentlemen, throughout its history, the non-aligned movement has been one of the prominent flag bearers for a peaceful, just, and credible international order. In the six decades that passed, the world has witnessed many atrocities. Yet the devastation inflicted on Palestinians since 7 October by the indiscriminate attacks of Israel in Gaza has been unprecedented in many aspects. UN Security Council has been paralyzed due to its inherent flaws and has failed even to call for a ceasefire. Thankfully, the overwhelming majority of the international community reject this injustice. We follow closely the proceedings before the International Court of Justice initiated by South Africa, which recently held hearings on the case against Israel made under the Genocide Convention in relation to Israel's actions against Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. As for ongoing relief efforts, Turkey stands among the leading nations in delivering life-saving humanitarian aid to Gaza, with close to 6,000 tons of aid to Al Arish by air and sea. The unfolding crisis has made one thing crystal clear. There can be no lasting peace in the Middle East without settling the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We believe that a lasting solution can be possible through embodiment of an independent, sovereign, and geographically contiguous state of Palestine based on 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. The prevention of the conflict turning into a regional war is another priority. This is our main message to all relevant parties, both within the region and beyond, in order to keep the situation restrained. Ladies and gentlemen, while the war in Gaza has shifted the global attention to the Middle East, the war in Ukraine is still going on fiercely, shaking the foundations of global security. Establishing a peace, prosperity, and stability belt in our vicinity, as well as around the world, is an important component of our foreign policy. To this effect, we are using our political and diplomatic channels effectively for the peaceful resolution of global and regional problems. A prominent example is the Black Sea Grain Initiative, with which we brought together Ukraine, Russia, and the UN to avert a global food crisis. We are now working with UN, Ukraine, and Russia on additional measures. On the other hand, Turkey contributes to the prosperity and stability of the African continent in line with our African solutions to African problems principle. But to achieve that, we need to ensure that security and stability are restored in Sudan, Libya, Somalia, and elsewhere. With its wide diplomatic network and political determination, Turkey is well suited as a problem solver, system improver, and transformer actor in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Excellencies, dear colleagues, peace and security are the basic pillars of development. As you all know, terrorism is one of the global challenges to development and democracy, which threaten our common future. We have long been simultaneously fighting against multiple terrorist organizations, such as PKK, FETO, Daesh, and Al-Qaeda. The eradication of all terrorist organizations permanently is an essential part of Turkey's national security strategy. It is also a necessity for ensuring peace and security in our region. 
knowing that the fight against terrorism requires coherent and long-term international cooperation, we will remain at the forefront in mobilizing global action in our common fight against terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. Excellencies, the theme that our Ugandan friends choose for this summit, deepening cooperation for shared global affluence, precisely overlaps with Turkey's vision and aspiration in its foreign relations. As one of the leading countries in development and humanitarian assistance, Turkey will continue its solidarity with its region and beyond with the principle of leaving no one behind. Our motto, the world is bigger than five, captures the international community's rightful call for just, effective, and strengthened multilateralism with the UN at its heart. A more and fair world is possible. This is also what this movement stands for. In conclusion, let me assure you that Turkey will continue to support non-aligned movement members in their quest for sustained peace, stability, and development across the globe. I would like to express my gratitude to President Museveni for hosting the NAM summit, and I would like to thank all the delegates for their contributions. I want to thank His Excellency, the Vice President of, of Turkey. I now suspend for the press to go away. Uh, I now ask the press to leave the, the hall because they are not trusted for secrecy. They are among us. So the, the ones responsible make sure they clear out. So now we are going for the heads of state. We are still going on with the Heads of State Summit uh, that is happening, a non-aligned movement summit that is happening.